Number 27, Come All Ye brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. <clears throat> Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people. As he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets from the beginning, salvation from our enemies. <coughs> that we, being delivered out of the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear. In holiness and justice before him, all the days of our life. 
O Lord, give us knowledge of salvation in the remission of our sins, through thy tender mercy, in which the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness, and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. Amen. Our Father, who art in the heavens, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so upon the earth. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. O Lord, forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. Glory be to the Lord God, our Savior, Jesus Christ. He is the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Amen. Praise the Lord. And our next hymn this morning is hymn number one in a manger, and we'll sing it twice through. recitation this morning is number 13 from Matthew chapter 1 verses 22 through 25. And all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was declared by the Lord through the prophet saying, Behold, the virgin shall have in the womb and bring forth a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel which being interpreted is God with us. And Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not, until she brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Hear now from the word of the Lord, as it is written in the Gospel of Luke, a portion of chapter 1. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent out from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David, and the name of the virgin was Mary. And the angel coming into her said, Hail, thou who art graced, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. But when she saw him, she was disturbed at his word, and reasoned within herself what manner of a greeting this should be. And the angel said to her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found grace with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, 
and shall bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. And he shall be great, and he shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give to him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How shall this be, since I know not a man? And the angel answering said to her, The Holy Spirit shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that which shall be born of thee holy shall be called the Son of God. Reading further from the word of the Lord, as it is written in his second coming in the work Arcana Celestia, a portion of passage 1,414. The Lord was like other men, except that he was conceived of Yahuwah, but still was born of a virgin mother and by birth derived infirmities from the virgin mother like those of man in general. There are two hereditary natures conate in man, one from the father and the other from the mother. The Lord's heredity from the father was divine. But his heredity from the mother was the infirm human. This infirm nature which a man derives hereditarily from his mother is something corporeal that is dispersed when he is being regenerated, while that which man derives from his father remains to eternity. But the Lord's heredity from Yehovah, as was said, was the divine. Another arcanum is that the Lord's human was also made divine. In him alone was a correspondence of all the things of the body with the divine, a most perfect correspondence, infinitely perfect, giving rise to a union of the corporeal things with divine celestial things, of sensuous things with divine spiritual things. And thus, he was the perfect man, the only Man. And our final reading this morning is from the work The Last Judgment, posthumously published, a portion of 100, passage 129. I was afterwards led beyond the Mohammedans to certain Gentiles who were in the eastern quarter, with whom it was granted to speak. They said that they were sad because the divine does not appear to them, when yet they think of the divine and speak about it. And therefore, if there is a God, they had hoped that he would send to them those who would teach them. But they had long waited for this in vain, lamenting that perchance he had deserted them, and that thus there seemed nothing else for them but to perish. And then I heard angels speaking with them out of heaven, saying that God could not have been manifested to them because they had not been willing to believe that God was born a man in the world, or that he had taken on a human, and that until they believe this, God cannot be manifested to them, nor can they be taught, because this is the primary thing of all revelation." They said that they did indeed believe that God is man, but they could not comprehend that he was born man in the world. But answer was made to them that he was not born man like any other man, since he was not born from a human father, but from the father, Yehoah, and by a virgin, and that thus he was unlike any other man. For a man's soul from a human father is a recipient of life. But the Lord's soul from the Father Yehovah is life itself, which gives life to all. And the difference is as between the human and the divine, and the finite and the infinite, or the create and the uncreate. And because he was such as to his soul, It could not be otherwise than that his body should become like his soul, after he had rejected that of the body which he had taken from the mother, and that therefore he arose as to his whole body, 
nor did he leave anything of it in the sepulcher, as is the case with every other man, who rises only as to his spirit and never as to his material body. And further, it was said that the divine itself, as it is in itself which is infinite, could not have done otherwise than reject the finite which was from the mother, and put on the infinite from the father, thus the divine. They said that they had known no other than that he was like any other man born from a human father, and also that he so died and was afterwards received by men as God, and that now they know that the Lord is not such a man as others are. After they received these things, they were divided. And those who had received the faith were instructed by angels in other matters of faith and love. Here end our lessons. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Amen. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be for good pleasure before thy face, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Please be seated. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in the manger. 
Picture Mary and Joseph looking down at that manger, looking at a newborn infant, looking at a little baby conceived from Yehovah. Both Mary and Joseph knew that Jesus did not have an earthly father. They both knew that this baby boy was from the Holy Spirit. The angel Gabriel had explained to Mary before she even conceived, Thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and shalt bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He explained to her further, The Holy Spirit shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that which shall be born of thee, holy, shall be called the Son of God. And later, after Mary had conceived, as Gabriel told her that she would, Gabriel also appeared to Joseph and explained to Joseph, Fear not to take thee, Mary, thy wife, for that which is begotten in her is from the Holy Spirit. So when we think of Mary laying the baby Lord down in the manger, we can think of her and Joseph seeing for themselves for the first time what the Son of God looked like, lying there in the manger. Now, like Mary and Joseph, if we are willing servants of the Lord, then Gabriel's message is all we need to know to understand who Jesus is too. And as the Lord explains to us in Apocalypse explained, all this makes clear that the divine was the Lord, was in the Lord from conception. And that the divine was his life from the Father, which life is the soul. But the Lord in his second coming teaches us so much more about this. And he teaches us so much more so that we can get beyond false nations, notions about his birth and about his very nature. And one way the Lord really helps us do this is through understanding his teachings on order. The Lord teaches us in true Christian religion that God assumed the human, it says, in accordance with his divine order. And that since God is order itself, it was necessary, it says, that if he was to become man actually, that he should be conceived, carried in the womb, born, educated, acquire knowledges gradually, and thereby be introduced into intelligence and wisdom. So this morning, we're going to focus on the divine order regarding the very conception of every single human being. And we're going to see how the Lord followed this divine order with his own advent. The Lord teaches us in the heavenly doctrine that the spiritual origin of all human seed is truth from good. It is according to divine order that each one of us began with the human seed from the Father. And this tiny group of cells is the very first receptacle of life. It is a form of the Father's love, we are taught, and within it is an endeavor to the human form. This first receptacle of life contains our soul. What comes from the mother clothes our soul. And the Lord explains this in True Christian Religion, where he says that the soul which is from the Father is the man himself, while the body which is from the mother is not the man in himself, but is from the man. It is simply the soul's clothing, woven of such things as are from the natural world, while the soul is woven of such things as exist in the spiritual world. And the Lord explains this even further, the difference between what we receive from our mother and what we receive from our father. Where he says, what a man receives from his father is one thing, and what he receives from his mother is another. From his father, a man receives all that is internal, his soul itself, or life, being from the father. But he receives from his mother all that is external. In a word, the interior man or spirit itself is from the father. But the outer man, or body itself, is from the mother. 
which everyone can comprehend merely from the fact that the soul itself is implanted by the Father, and this begins to clothe itself in a little bodily form in the ovum. Whatever is afterwards added, whether in the ovum or in the womb, is of the mother. For it has no increase from anywhere else. And this explanation may be helpful in understanding something else that we receive from our father and from our mother. Hereditary evil. The Lord teaches us in the Arcana that hereditary evil derives its origin from everyone's parents and parents' parents, or from grandparents and ancestors successively. Every evil which they have acquired by actual life, even so that by frequent use or habit it has become like a nature, is derived into the children and becomes hereditary to them, together with that which had been implanted in the parents from grandparents and from ancestors. But the Lord also explains to us that there is a fundamental difference between the hereditary evil that we receive from our mother and the hereditary evil that we receive from our father. The passage continues. The hereditary evil from the father is more inward, and the hereditary evil from the mother is more outward. The former cannot be easily rooted out, but the latter can. When man is being regenerated, the hereditary evil inrooted from his nearest parents is plucked up by the roots. But with those who are not being regenerated or who cannot be regenerated, it remains. This, then, is hereditary evil. Now, it is with this complete set of hereditary evils that man is then born. And in these teachings, the Lord has revealed to us the divine order guiding the conception of every single human being. Man begins with the seed of the Father. The spiritual origin of this seed is truth from good. This seed is a form of the Father's love and a seat for the soul. This seed contains within it an endeavor to the human form. It also contains within it what will be internal to the man, including a more inward inclination to evils passed down from the father. This seed, once received in what is from the mother, is then clothed with a human body, a body growing from that endeavor to the human form in the seed itself. Once clothed with what is from the mother, this newly conceived man then has an external to complement its internal, including the external hereditary evil that comes with it. This is how each one of us begin. And this is the order that the Lord followed in His own birth, here on earth. And, the Lord, and with the Lord, everything that came from the Father came from Himself. He was conceived of Yehovah, it says. The Lord's human, we read in true Christian religion, is actually the Son of God, because it was conceived from Yehovah God as its Father. The seed of the Lord Jesus Christ was the divine itself. As we read in the Arcana, the seed itself in him was celestial, because he was born of Yehovah, and therefore, he was the only one who had this seed in himself. His seed was the divine truth from the divine good in its own essence, infinite and uncreate, it says. So let's think together this morning how this starting point for the Lord's birth on earth affected every other thing about him from his very conception. This divine starting point means that the divine seed of Jesus was not merely a receptacle of life, like the seed that we all came from, but that it was life itself. It was not merely a form of a human father's love, it was the form of divine good from divine love itself. 
It means that the paternal heredity in Jesus was divine. It means that his internal was divine. It means that upon conception, the endeavor toward the human form in him was a perfect endeavor toward a perfect human form. It means that from his very conception, he would, unlike any man, desire only good and long only for truth because his soul was divine. The inmost of Jesus from the very moment of his conception was the divine love which could alone lead him to live from a love toward the whole human race and from a desire to fight for our salvation. It was this divine seed, this divine soul, the divine truth from the divine good in its own essence that took on an external hereditary evil from Mary. It was this divine internal, this divine endeavor toward a perfect human form that took on an imperfect body from Mary. From this, can we see that once Jesus was conceived from Yahuwah himself, his glorification was inevitable? The external hereditary evil and the external flawed bodily material that clothed the divine soul of Jesus at his conception could not possibly encapsulate the divine itself for long. We read in the heavenly doctrine, it could not be otherwise than that his body should become like his soul. The divine itself, as it is in itself, which is infinite, could not have done otherwise than reject the finite which comes from the mother and put on the infinite from the father, thus the divine. By understanding the conception of Jesus, we can see how he is God. We can believe in him more fully and we can see how he was able to take on every single temptation that hell could muster and save the human race then and save every single one of us now if we are willing. So let's finish this morning by returning in our minds to the image given to us in the word that we began with. The image of the babe lying in the manger. The infant Jesus the Son of God. Amen. And now to the one only God, Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. And our next hymn this morning is hymn number four, Holy Night.
Let us pray. Lord God, our Savior, Jesus Christ, bless us and keep us and cause thy face to shine upon us and give us peace. Yes, I come quickly. Amen. Yes, come, Lord Jesus. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. And our last hymn this morning is number 33, Joy to the World.